Hey everyone, uh, welcome to another video on the playlist and this video will be uh, diving into the Kafka fundamentals. So I have divided this in two parts. So there will be two video and this is the part one of the video. So let's get started. So this is the bird eye view of all the Kafka components that you will see, right? So I'll be explaining the details of each and every component that is mentioned here, but just for, so you have a source system which you which will be sending the data right so there is something called as producer api that it will be used right so source system use a producer that will produce all your data to your kafka cluster kafka cluster can have different brokers so you can think about each broker is a like a machine that exists in that particular cluster that's why this is called like distributed cluster right because you have different uh, brokers that is being used. Then it, there will be something called as consumer API. So this API will be used by target system to consume the data from Kafka, Kafka cluster and that will be stored in a target system. We'll be explaining in very much detail regarding Zookeeper. It is used for coordination. So we'll be talking about some of the responsibilities that Zookeeper has in Kafka. Now, uh, now let's uh, focus on Kafka cluster and let's zoom into Kafka cluster to understand what are the components exist. So in a Kafka cluster, they, it is like having like different brokers, right? Think it as a different virtual machine, because if you just uh, use one virtual machine, it will not have enough hardware that is uh, that can be used for you know storing the data or processing it efficiently so you can think about like if we add like different machines together you can do like horizontally scaling for the particular cluster right so that's how you scale any particular cluster and if i zoom into kafka cluster now sorry if i zoom into kafka broker it, Kafka broker can have uh, different topics inside it, right? So it could have like here I mentioned like three topics it can have uh, any number of topic mentioned. So you can think about Kafka topic is a logical container where messages are organized and stored, enabling producers to send data and consumers to retrieve it in a streaming app system, right? Think it as a tables in database. So it's just a container abstraction around it like how you store the data so you are sending all your data to a particular topic think it as a table in a uh, traditional uh, uh, relational database right so just a place where you store the data now let's zoom more into the topic okay so one thing to note here is that whatever messages that you send right there is a retention period so by default whatever message you say that gets deleted after one week so this is to save this space and cost so this retention period time you can configure with kafka topic so that we will see it later but yeah remember that it gets deleted and there's an option also to disable it if you don't want to disable it but usually everyone sets a retention period on top of uh, kafka topic now let's zoom into topic now okay so each topic will be partitioned we'll understand the importance of partitioning the tables but if you think about this topic can have different partition if you know that spark also use partitions right so any if you read any data it will be uh, stored as a different partition so that's how kafka also does the same so right so kafka divides your data into different partition and each partition will have it in the offsets right so the offsets start with 0 1 2 3 and it gets increased within the partitions so this is a very important things to notice that what it means it just address on the memory right so your topic gets divided into partition zero and every message will get a uh, 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 index that is called as offsets 
So why this offset is required? Suppose you want to identify any particular message. How we'll do that? You will first find, okay, uh, my data is coming into this topic. What is the partition number? So you find out, okay, my partition message is stored in partition zero. And where is the address? The address will be the offset. So if you just go to uh, topic zero, partition zero and index uh, uh, offset eight, you'll get your message. So this is this is how the internal works in terms of topic partition and offsets. So what are the benefits of topic partition? First, parallelism and scalability. So partition allows data to be distributed across multiple brokers, enabling parallel processing of messages by multiple consumers, which improves through throughput and performance. Let's see how it does. So if you see in the diagram, you have different brokers. So each topic will be partitioned, right? So just consider it on topic A. So topic has like partition zero, one and two, which was divided into different brokers, right? So now what happens is if your topic is partition, each partition can be read by one consumer, right? So what happens is if this topic has like three partition, so three consumers can read the data uh, concurrently, right? So that increase the parallelism, right? So if it this topic has like thousand uh, partition, then thousand consumer application can read the data parallelly. So it doesn't have to do like serial by serial, right? So that's one of the benefit of partition topic. Data ordering. So what happens is within each partition, Kafka guarantees message ordering, which is essential for maintaining sequence in time sensitive or transaction data. So what happens is whenever I am pushing any data to any topic, it will go to any of the partition. It can go to partition zero, one, three. We'll, we'll understand how producer decides like which partition the data should go on. But just think that whatever message I am pushing, if it goes to partition zero, what happens is messages only get appended at the end right so whatever message is uh, we are sending suppose i am sending the first message it will go to partition zero the second message goes to partition one so these are order within the partition so that's a very important use case whenever we need to maintain sequence for a like time sensitive or transactional data so we'll understand more on this like whenever we are building the real application around it we'll see like how we create the partitions, how we are storing the uh, data into the partitions, correct? Okay, fault tolerance is one of the benefit of topic partitions. So what it does is partition can be replicated across brokers, ensuring that if one broker fails, another copy of the partition can take over, providing data durability and high availability. How it does that, right? So let's see that, let's consider not partition zero. So what uh, we have to decide how much replication we need, right? So this is one, one of the parameter that we have to set whenever we're creating the topic for a Kafka, right? So suppose, uh, let's think that we are having like only one replica. So partition zero will get replicated into a different broker. Right. So if you see that we are having the topic one, but the partition zero is getting uh, copied into a different broker. How it is helpful is suppose this particular broker goes down, right? But still, because it's a distributed machine and there is a lot of machine, a uh, lot of machine or brokers that gets involved. Suppose for any reason, for any fault, this particular broker goes down, but still for this particular partition you have a copy in broker 101 right so it's it's not lost correct so even if you lose any computer you still have the data intact so this is also a like a benefit of partition topic and the replication okay so we have seen that uh, there is like a replication going on right so there is a one concept called as partition leaders and replicas right so let's um, go through the uh, definition first so for a given topic partition one kafka bro broker is designated by the cluster to be responsible for sending and receiving data to the clients 
that broker is known as the leader broker of that topic partition any other broker that is storing replicated data for that partition is referred to as replica therefore each partition has one leader and multiple replicas okay let's understand this right so you have a topic which are replicated right and each uh, sorry you have a topic which has different partition and each partition can have different replicas for fault tolerance but whenever any client consume the data or whenever any uh, client produce the data it does on the leader partition right so let's understand from this particular picture okay so topic a it is a partition zero right then this partition get, get replicated to broker two also right but whenever i read the data from this uh, from this topic i'll be reading directly from broker 101 because this is a leader right we'll see like how we are choosing this leader and this is uh, something that is done by zookeeper right? so if you see that the same thing ha is happening for the partition one also right so the partition one leader partition it resides in broker 102 the same thing gets replicated to broker 103 so whenever i want to read something from this particular partition partition one i have to contact broker 102 right so if you see that other partition called as isr right so these are called as in sync replicas so what are these in sync replicas so an isr is a replica that is up to date with the leader broker for a partition any replica that is not up to date with the leader is out of sync okay let me explain this right so if you see that partition zero is like replicated to to uh, to uh, this particular machine right now i have a replica that uh, for this particular partition right which is replicated in 102 and what happens is i have a producer which is producing their data right so i have a production application which is producing their data here for in this particular partition because it's a leader what happens is whenever the data gets re uh, uh, written to the leader all the other partition copied the all the replicas what it does is it checks if any data came for the particular partition right so this will check with the leader okay if are there any new data if there are any new data it will pull the data from the leader and it will copy to its own location what uh, so if it is like up to date right so any data that is coming here because it's a it's a if you see it's a copy between from one broker to another broker so it might happen that there is some delay that might be happening so uh, what uh, what in sync replica means is this particular broker uh, partition is always in sync right so we define the in sync replicas that we need at least one replica to be in sync right so that is what this in sync replica means now the last component here that what is the role of a zookeeper so zookeeper manages metadata for kafka tracking which brokers are in the cluster so this is a distributed cluster right so you can add more cluster as you go so zookeeper tracks that and it adds the cluster on, on the configuration it notes like which is the new broker that is getting added to the cluster right so it helps to identify the leader broker for each partition and topic and handles leader election so if you remember that in terms of replication you have a leader partition and you have a replicas so uh, which one is the leader how to choose the leader this is a job of zookeeper right and zookeeper also stores configuration for topics and manage permission so it knows like what are the topics created on that particular cluster it also sends notification to kafka whenever there is a change occurs such as new topics broker status updates or topic deletion so any uh, configuration changes that you are doing on top of the topic that will be uh, sent as a notification to kafka using zookeeper so zookeeper adds a lot of values 
but in kafka 4.0 this is uh, they getting removed there is i am at end of this video and in the next video we'll uh, continue on the kafka um, kafka fundamentals and we'll complete that thank you for watching